Hello and thank you very much for watching. We're starting out in James chapter 1 and verse 21. Wherefore lay apart all filthiness and superfluity of naughtiness and receive with meekness the engrafted word which is able to save your souls. Uh, this Bible that I'm holding in my hand is the pure word of God. And when you receive it and it enters in through one of your gates, either the ear gate or eye gate, uh, you're actually receiving something that becomes a part of you. You receive with meekness the engrafted word. If you can uh, envision a skin graft. Uh, sometimes people have uh, very severe burns and they have to actually graft in skin uh, to facilitate the healing and, and maybe a scar avoidance or whatever. Uh, many different motivations for that. Uh, when you receive of the Word of God, it actually becomes engrafted inside of you. And I'm talking about the pure Word of God. Uh, like in the English, uh, the pure Word of God is our King James Bible. And there's no proven error in it. As a matter of fact, it came from the Philadelphia Church period, which Jesus Christ endorsed. The Lord Jesus Christ endorsed the Church of Philadelphia. This Bible was given by inspiration of God. This Bible has God's breath in it. It does. Uh, when Adam, when God created Adam, he breathed in his nose the, uh, uh, the breath of life and he became a, a living soul. Uh, the Bible says all scripture is given by inspiration of God. Like it, when you inspire, you breathe in. Uh, the scriptures were inspired. Uh, there's a life in it. And when you, when you read it, you're bringing a life inside of your body. You receive with meekness the engrafted word. Uh, your body, for example, your body needs oxygen. And uh, if you have a low oxygen rate, then you're going to get sick. Uh, if you have parts of your body that are, are, are not healing properly, chances are there's an uh, oxygen issue there. Uh, one of the big things in the USA right now is hyper uh, barometric chambers where they pressurize a chamber with oxygen in there. And, it's, uh, and it heals a number of diseases. A lot of people that go through radiation therapy, uh, after the therapy's over, down the road, they go and get in the chamber because of the, uh, well, the good with the bad, whenever you go through radiation therapy, it does kill off cancer, but it uh, has some uh, side effects with other tissues in the certain zone or area that you're being treated. And they use hyperbaric oxygen chambers to, uh, pressurize and help to heal those areas even after that and uh, it's a uh, this is all more on a molecular level well your bible is also on a molecular level the bible says a little leaven leaveneth the whole lump and when you mess around with these perverted bibles in the english there when you mess around with those bibles you're messing yourself up you're just messing yourself up when it comes to getting somebody out of a heresy or cult or, or something like that uh, you got to take on the final authority. You got to take on the final authority. They won't get their, they won't get right division until they get final authority first. First, we teach final authority, and then second, we come in with right division. And uh, like charismatics, uh, most of the charismatics that I've ever met, they always use perverted Bibles. They had no final authority themselves. They were the final authority. They decided what was right and wrong instead of what the Scripture said. They either used the ESV or NASV, or NIV, or New King James, or, or some other perversion. In America, there's like so many perversions out there. It would take me a long time to try to identify them all. Because in America, they rewrite the Bible every year. They rewrite the Bible so they can sell them in bookstores and make more money from the Christian community. It's uh, red-hot capitalism. It's out. They're out to make money. That's what it's all about. The Bible says the love of money is the root of all evil. And they have bad love. That's bad love. And so the idea of receiving with meekness the engrafted word is you receive something that's producing light. It's kind of producing life. It's kind of like being in a chamber receiving that oxygen. It produces more life in your body. And uh, a lot of times, like in ambulances, uh, when a patient has issues, uh, the first thing they do is they, they put them on oxygen and uh, try to get oxygen back in their system to get more perfused with oxygen. And, uh, you know, when it comes to this idea of a little love and love at the whole lump, if you had a barrel, a lot of uh, 
institutional kitchens and cafeterias. They have like a, a small barrel. It's probably, it's much bigger than this and it's real round. And they put like uh, the tea in there. Like a lot of the restaurants, you go in the restaurants, they'll have a barrel that has unsweetened tea and a barrel that has sweetened tea, like in the USA. And uh, a lot of the fast foods do that. And you, and you get a cup and when you pay for your meal, they give you a cup and then you go get ice and then you stick it in there and fill it up yourself, you know. Let me ask you this, what would, your, what would you do if you knew like in that barrel of freshly brewed iced tea, if you knew there was one drop of urine, just one drop of urine in that whole barrel, would you drink it? Hello, if it was just one drop of urine, just, I mean, just one drop, I'm not talking about a whole uh, cup full or I'm talking about just one, just one drop in this barrel of iced tea. I mean, this barrel of uh, freshly brewed tea. Would you drink any of it? No, you wouldn't. You wouldn't drink any of it if you're normal. You wouldn't drink it. I wouldn't drink it. And I, I feel the same way like the Word of God. I don't want to use perverted scripture. And uh, when I've got this available, why would I want to use a perverted Bible? I want, I want the exact pure Word of God going in my system. It's like when you go in surgery. When you go to surgery, do you want dirty instruments to do the surgery with, or are they sterilized? What do you want? You want it sterilized. Uh, you go into a uh, high-tech environment and a surg surgical center and, and everything is sterilized and uh, everything's washed up and, and and that's what they do the surgery with and even in a kitchen do you want you want dirty equipment used to cook your food no you don't you want clean clean utensils and everything's clean you don't want to go into a dirty kitchen and cook out cook and receive food from a dirty kitchen that's why in the USA they have health inspectors that go around and, and inspect the restaurant and rate it and test it and, uh, and, uh, and kind of like keep the pressure on to make sure that the food is always sterile. You know, I, I feel the same way about the Word of God. I have the pure uh, Word of God today. We're, we're supposed to receive with meekness the engrafted Word which is able to save your souls. It's the Word of God that saves you. Uh, the Bible says, Faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the Word of God. You get it either through your eye gate or you get it through your ear gate. One of those two gates is where you get it. You can read it. In my case, when I got saved, I read it. I was like uh, in a bathroom like in uh, 1982 and uh, I was reading a devotional, a little devotional magazine to explain how to be born again. And before then, I didn't understand it. I read it and all of a sudden I got it and I got born again. I had the Word of God in there. Uh, I received with meekness the engrafted word, and which is able to save your souls. And I got saved. Faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. I got it through my eye gate, but sometimes people get it through their ear gate. They'll get it like in a preaching service at a church. They hear it, and for the first time, it clicks. They understand it. And they receive it. In my case, uh, nobody had to twist my arm. Uh, when I, I knew a good deal when I heard it, I knew a good deal when I seen it, and I received it. And I took it immediately. It wasn't like I rejected it and somebody asked me again and I rejected it. Nothing like that at all. It was the first time in my life that I recall uh, understanding it. I'm like, wow, that, is that how it works? One time, one time I was preaching on the street and uh, I was on the sidewalk and there was a guy on, a, uh, on one of these little uh, crawlers it was a crawler that they used for crawl, uh, laying on it and sliding under a car. And this guy, uh, he had no legs. He had no legs, and he was using a crawler for transportation down sidewalks. And he had a little uh, dwarf with him, uh, beside him. And uh, those two were like a team, and they went on the street. And what they were, they were professional panhandlers. And I'm not, I'm not condemning them or, or nothing. It's just who I met on the street. And I witnessed to them. And... Uh, and they heard me preaching on the street. And all of a sudden, uh, the dwarf yelled out. He yelled out. He just, he shook, just an instant shook like that. And went, is that how it works? That's what he said. Is that how it works? And uh, I was like, yeah, you got it, didn't you? Yeah. He's like, and we prayed with him. He got, he got born again on the street. That was the first time that it clicked. 
He received with meekness the engrafted word. As a matter of fact, it went into us. It went into him, and he just he trembled for him. He just shook just for a minute. He goes, "Is that how it works?" He received. He got born again. He received with me. He came into his body. He received with meekness the engrafted word. There was another time I could tell you many stories. There was one time I was in a nursing home with the elderly, and I was preaching the blood atonement. I had my drawing board up, and I preached the blood atonement. And out of the clear blue, just out of nowhere, a woman yells out, is that how it works? She she got born again on the spot. She yelled out, is that how it works? That's what a preacher really does. He tries to go in and make it simple. He tries to go in and make it simple so they can get born again. And like with your elderly, their thinking process is a lot of times they still, I've met some elderly that were extremely sharp, don't get me wrong, but uh, a lot of them in the nursing homes, they think slow, and you have to lay it out and make it real simplified. And uh, she yelled out, is that how it works? And just just instant, instantly interrupted the whole service. And it was a room, it was a crowded room full of elderly. And just right in the middle, she yells out, is that how it works? She just, 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 she received it. It, it produced life. It produced life. Just like somebody's got a problem with, Oxygen, all of a sudden they're getting oxygen and uh, they sleep so much better and they feel much better and they think more clearly. And, and uh, I've heard too many, I've heard, just heard too many people tell me that after they got born again, the food tasted better, the air uh, smelt better, the beverages tasted better. Just all of a sudden they instantly had a higher quality of life. And uh, it was because they received with meekness the engrafted word. The word actually became a part of them it comes inside of you and you receive it so we suggest that we're dealing with people with heresies uh, like in the charismatic movement or uh, uh, you know other other forms of religion out there we suggest you go in with a King James Bible the people that I know personally that got the victory that got out of that movement they usually were led out using the King James Bible there are charismatic churches out there that actually use a King James Bible and they're a lot more easier to deal with because they already have a King James Bible and uh, we've given booklets to them that had right, right division showed them how the sign gifts operate and things like that and the ones that had no final authority they usually they didn't care about that book they even looked at it. they didn't care about that book but the ones that had a final authority and realized that there was something that was higher in authority than themselves, they usually came around. Those kind of people will come around. So I, my exhortation in this particular video is to use, when you're dealing with people in the English language, to use a King James Bible. Uh, go in there with the King James Bible and get them established on final authority first. You do that first. If they're not saved, I'd get them saved first. But after, after salvation, I'd get them lined up with final authority. And then after that, I get them established as far as right division. And then after that, you can go into the particular heresy that they are sidetracked on. It really, heresy will affect your character and conduct. And there's so many disadvantages of being connected with the heresy. <clears throat> when it comes to dealing with the charismatics, probably over 90, 95% of them believe they can lose their salvation. And uh, there are a small group of them, very small, that believe actually that works either uh, keeping good works or abstaining from bad works has something to do with their salvation, but that's a, a very small, small percentage of them. Most of them know that salvation is a free gift, but they also believe that departure of faith, they could lose their salvation if they uh, departed from their faith. I knew a guy one time that had a problem. Somebody else was telling me that he thinks that the guy lost his salvation. You know, So they don't. most of them don't even understand the eternal security of the saint. You know, so if it's eternal, you can't terminate it. Eternal life, you can't terminate eternal life. Well, anyway, so we're promoting in this video to go molecular. That is getting to the Word of God um, in its purest form. Thank you very much for watching.